Our final speaker this evening is Dr. Lena Gonzalez from Colombia. Um, Dr. Gonzalez is based at the University of Caldas and will speak to us this evening about the systematic review and meta-analysis of the effectiveness of cefquinone treatment protocols of clinical mastitis in dairy cows. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, as Dr. said, I'm going to present the results of this study, which is a systematic review and meta-analysis of the treatment of the effectiveness of the cefquinone treatment protocols of clinical mastitis in dairy cows. Uh, this, this, this study was conducted in collaboration between the University uh, of Caldas, the University of Colombia, the University of Temuco in Chile, and the University of Prince Edward in Canada. I know that uh, maybe you all, all have uh, listened to this, but it's important to remember that uh, the therapy for clinical mastitis and for subclinical mastitis passes through the health and through the welfare of animals. Uh, but uh, when it starts to worry the most is when we search for the cost associated to the, to the therapy of the cases. Uh, this cost relates to the treatment it, uh, of the labor of the personnel involved in the treatment and the di diagnosis the production loses uh, that it re uh, can represent, and in some cases, the culling of the animals and its replacement. Um, you know that uh, it has been always a controversy in relation to the selection of the treatment according to the severity of the case, to the, dur to the duration of the treatment protocol, and to the field effectiveness of the antibiotic. This happens to most of the antibiotics, but also happens to cefquinone, which is one of the most uh, widely used therapies to treat mastitis. Um, in relation to the field effectiveness, we have to consider that it's, it may be different from the experimental effectiveness uh, when we look for uh, studies that, that were done in, in experimental conditions or in lab conditions. Um, and it's important to state that the, that the use of antibiotics is the main reason uh, uh, in bovine uh, species, and also that when we choose a therapy, we do not only consider uh, the agent itself, but we also consider, um, uh, for, for example, the characteristics of the animal and from the resistance and from the environment that uh, it is. And finally, when we consider all that, we can make, make a, an informed choice and start to contribute to the rational antibiotic use. And that will represent uh, for the farmer on an efficient use of the resources and on an effective treatment uh, at the end. Um, as, as I was saying at, um, I'm sorry. As I was saying at first, um, uh, also, for cefquinome, we have the doubt and which protocol do we have to, to use to treat clinical mastitis cases. If we have to apply a standard uh, uh, treatment dur duration, which is like one or two days, or if we have to use an extended treatment that it is five days or sometimes it might be up to eight days. Uh, and, this, and, and the idea of doing this systematic re, uh, review and meta-analysis is that we want to provide recommendations that are evidence-based uh, uh, for people to use it in the field. So finally, the objective of this study was to assess the effectiveness of two treatment protocols using cefquinome a standard versus extended therapy for the treatment of clinical mastitis in dairy cows by means of a systematic review and meta-analysis of scientific literature. So what we did, we started by choosing our question, which was the one that I have said all this time, which is, which is the effectiveness of cefquinome standard therapy in comparison to the extended therapy duration for the treatment of clinical mastitis in bovine. So for answering that question, we started by looking for all the evidence that we could, the best way we could. And we searched for randomized clinical trials that evaluated uh, the standard versus extended treatment duration with cefquinone that were done in cows or heifers with clinical mastitis diagnosis in any severity of the condition. It didn't matter if it were mild, moderate, or, or severe cases. 
and we searched that these, uh, within these trials that they had clinical cure, bacteri bacteriological cure, clinical improvement, somatic cell count, and as secondary outcomes, we found uh, the recurrence, the milk pro uh, production, and the culling. So for that, we, we started to develop a search strategy that we tried it to be the most sensitive that we could. And we included studies starting on 2000 on uh, in the languages you, you see there, English, Spanish, German, Portuguese, French, and Italian. Uh, the first part was an electronic search, uh, which included uh, an instructor um, um, a strategy for searching the trials, and it was done on Cava Abstracts, Ovid, Science Direct, Scopus, Web of Science, and Cielo. And to complete that and to avoid the reporting biases, uh, we tried to search the, uh, the proceedings of the events that uh, regularly produce literature on that area, which, for example, British Massachusetts Conference, uh, the National Massachusetts Council uh, Conference. And we also contacted authors of the groups that we knew that work with the therapy of mastitis. And finally, of the studies that were Initially selected, we checked for the references to see if there were more trials that we could get that uh, address our question. After that, we started with the extraction of the data and the analysis. Two reviewers did independent screening of the references, data extraction in a pre-specified form, and uh, assess the risk of bias. After that, a random effects meta-analysis uh, using the mountain hand cell method was conducted to compare the extended versus the uh, standard therapy through, uh, for the two trials. And the results uh, were shown with the measure of odds ratio with uh, its confidence interval at 95%. For the risk of bias assessment, we checked that the studies included, um, for example, I'm sorry, consider the random sequence generation and the allocation con concealment, which meant to look for the selection bias, the blinding of the personnel for the performance bias, the blinding of the outcome assessment, the detection bias, the incomplete outcome data address for the attrition bias, the, and the selective reporting for the reporting biases on the outcomes stated at first. And we also considered what other biases could they have. Um, the, this was done to assess like the quality of the evidence that we were looking. So what we found uh, during the, I have to say that this is a part of a broader systematic review, so that's why so many studies are here, but we started with 2,361 studies through the database searching and 20 for the additional sources. After that, we remove the duplicates, we have this quantity, and uh, to, ha to 2,179 records were excluded because they were not truly evaluating self-genome or they were not comparing the standard versus the, the standard the, the therapy. And four studies were included in the qualitative synthesis, synthesis and two of them were included in the meta-analysis that I'm going to present. The protocols that we found that they compared were, for example, the intramammary uh, treatment with 75 milligrams every 12 hours for three times, um, the protocol A, which is that one, plus intramuscular injection of 625 milligrams at zero and 24 hours, uh, the, 75, the C is 75 milligrams uh, intramammary three infusions every 12 hours plus three other infusions every 24 hours. That for the meta-analysis, it's going to be the extended treatment. And uh, finally, the mixture of the 75 intramammary every 12 hours on day one and then once a day for four days. And plus one milligram per kilogram intramuscularly every 24 hours for five times. So here we have uh, the results of the meta-analysis with the unadjusted results. This means that this, these results did not consider the effect of any other confounder that uh, there could have existed in the trials. Uh, for this, in the case of the clinical cure, we can see that the pooled estimate for the two trials that we included was uh, 
zero three for the odds ratio, but that we, that it was not significant. And the same for the bacteriological cure, which was 1.25 with a non-significant uh, com confidence interval, meaning that it's the same, that there is not a significant difference between treating with a standard duration therapy uh, to extended uh, treatment with safkinome. And for the case of the somatic cell count reduction to less than 200,000 cells per millimeter, we also found that the estimator was 1.42 with a non-significant uh, confidence interval, meaning that it, it didn't show a difference between the two treatment protocols. But when we did a meta-analysis with the same da data, but taking into account the adjusted data, that meant that we took into account the results of the logistic models that were run in the trials. We found that um, even though they were adjusted by, for example, days in milk, parity, herd, uh, type of treatment, um, and other variables, there was also not a difference between the two treatment protocols. Uh, so there was no evidence to, of improvement in bacteriological cure by treating clinical mastitis cases with a standard compared to extended treatment. Uh, even though we got from the studies, uh, which were the main predictions for bacteriological cure, no matter which, the, which therapy uh, we used, and they were the uh, Staphylococcus infections uh, were less likely to cure. You see here that the odds ratio, it's like protective factor uh, to cure, and, the inter and that there was an interaction between the duration of the treatment and the streptococcal infections. Uh, that means for that, for example, um, the extended treatment, it's better to use when the infection is caused by a, a streptococcus, in especially streptococcus ueris, but there was not a difference for the other agents. And finally, the, S the SCC before the treatment uh, was an important predictor, meaning that the higher the SCC be be before the treatment, the lower the cure probability, no matter which treatment you are going to use. Okay, and one study uh, found um, that use um, logistic regression found a difference uh, in clinical cure, comparing the protocols A versus C, which is extended, uh, 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 is standard versus extended, and found that the pretreatment cow other firmness was a significant predictor for the outcome. And just one study evaluated the outcome clinical persistence or recurrence, and they found that the, that, well, uh, in fact, that the important thing here is that the farm, the quarter location, the parity, and the use of NSAIDs were significantly predictors for the recurrence. Finally, when we check the risk of bias of the studies uh, in, in that we found, we can see that the main problem is related to the blinding of the participants and the personnel. What happens? Uh, regularly, the trials that, that, that we do on veterinary me medicine are not blinded uh, to the person that does the outcome evaluation or to the person that is in charge of putting on the treatments so that uh, is a bias and can put into risk the validity of the results. But um, in general, the quality of the trial was, was, was good. And finally, to conclude, uh, there was no there was no difference between bacteriological cure, clinical cure, or lowering the somatic cell count in the overall meta-analysis with raw data. Uh, there was no difference all the, uh, in the bacteriological cure after controlling for the confounders. And uh, we have to consider that the, cl the clinical cure following the extended treatment pro protocol was different in one study, showing a positive effect towards the extended treatment. But so far, until today, for the best evidence we have, uh, the evidence supports the use of cefquinone to treat clinical mastitis caused by a streptococcus uveris mainly, following an ex extended treatment protocol. If it's not a streptococcus uveris or an streptococcus, uh, a streptococcus uh, the standard treatment should be the choice because the evidence doesn't show any other um, evidence to, to, to select the extended treatment. And finally, I would like to thank MSD for, for allowing us to bring this, um, 
this study here for sponsoring uh, our coming here to the Congress, but they were not involved in destruction of the data or the analysis of the data. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. Any questions from the floor? Yeah, if you'd like to come forward to the microphone, please. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Francesco Testa. I'm from Italy. Um, I was wondering if uh, the absence of difference could be due to the low number of studies included in the meta-analysis. There are just two studies. It's not obviously your problem. There are no trials on this topic. But could this be an explanation? Thank you. Well, uh, no. For example, what you do in a meta-analysis is that you gather the information you have so far, and so far we only could find two trials. And then it goes and like weightens the 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 trial by the number of animals it could gather and the difference of the effect. So it may change when you add studies, but so far, um, but it depends on the results of the new trials, not on these trials, uh, because it's not adjusted by the by the um, by the number of studies you include in the meta-analysis. Any other questions? Okay, if not, okay. I'd like to thank Dr. Gonzalez very much. I'd like to thank you all for your attention you. and for attending today. And if you'd like to give the speakers one last round of applause, it'd be much appreciated. Thank you.